As the summer season approaches, easily one of the biggest cinematic events of the year, maybe even a decade, will be Avengers Infinity War. Now in this movie, we'll get to see Josh Brolin's portrayal of the Mad Titan Thanos, a villain that has been hyped up since an end credit tease in 2012's The Avengers. Now many fans and casual viewers are familiar with Marvel's films, which makes them worried. I mean, will Thanos be another forgettable villain, or will he end the supposed curse surrounding Marvel villains? Now this is an interesting subject across the internet that hopefully we can address in this editorial. Phase 1 of the MCU began with 2008's Iron Man and ended with 2012's The Avengers. The primary villains that appeared were really the following, Iron Monger, Abomination, Whiplash, Loki, and Red Skull. I understand I'm leaving out a few other antagonists such as General Ross, Arnim Zola, and the Ten Rings, but I'm really just focusing on supervillains for the sake of the argument, or at least like the main supervillains. So it's fair to say that the only memorable villains out of Phase 1 were Loki and Red Skull. The Iron Monger was really too generic of a villain, while Abomination had some interesting buildup, but overall he was forgettable. I would also like to think that this is because their origin story is focused on our hero, thus limiting the villain's presence and development. Now Loki worked really well because 2011's Thor was an origin story for Loki almost as it was an origin story for Thor. Along with a great performance from Tom Hiddleston and a few more appearances, we grew to love Loki's character, even if he's technically a mass murderer with a god complex. Red Skull I think was a really big fan favorite portrayal, and I think for me personally it made a lasting impression just due to his interest in mythology that we got to see in the beginning. I mean to me it really allowed me to learn his personality more in depth, especially as we saw it influence his actions throughout the movie and then we got little bits and pieces here and there. So not really a lot of hits in phase one, really just Loki I guess at the end of the day. But when you move on to phase two, we kind of have a few more hits. I mean we have Aldra Killian, Winter Soldier, Ronin, Ultron. I mean we had a few more severe mistakes with Thor to Dark World and to a lesser degree Ant-Man. But overall I think phase two really improved the villain department. I mean these stories focus more on the villain and in Captain America the Winter Soldier we also experienced the potential of letting characters survive to enrich future installments. Iron Man 3 actually was an interesting kind of movie because it suffered for trying to do too much and be too much for its own good I felt like. I mean I thought the villain Killian and the plot were great although it wasn't really that reverent and if you're making a superhero movie or a comic book movie a big thing is reverence to the source material. Kind of I think summarizes the whole Mandarin debacle. All in all for villains such as Ultron and Ronin I feel like the biggest issue was really just the way they were defeated, as their characters had great buildup but the finales fell flat. I mean most people still complain about the dance battle seen in Guardians of the Galaxy, and I really can't blame them because really it kind of feels like they didn't know how to tie the knot so they just kind of threw everything out the window and decided to do the most not absurd thing possible but just something possible. Now with Phase 3 it seems definitely like Marvel's hit a good stride with their villains. I mean we got Zemo, Ego, Vulture, Hela, those are all great characters. I mean I just rewatched Spider-Man Homecoming the other night and Michael Keaton really hit out the park. And the same thing for Ego. I mean like damn, like I kind of wish he was my dad to some degree while watching Guardians of the Galaxy 2 until he kind of you know became all evil and stuff. If you go to Doctor Strange, I think he probably had the weakest villain so far out of this phase. And really, like I said before, you could argue it relates back to the fact that it's really kind of an origin story. You know, although it does appear that Mordo will become a pretty cool villain down the road as, you know, Doctor Strange hopefully gets a sequel that comes out soon. So, who knows, maybe Doctor Strange will correct its villain record in the future of the franchise. But like I said before, villains such as Vulture and Ego were great, largely since they received exploration which allowed us to relate to them on some level. You know, they also had fantastic actors giving them life, which I'm sure really helped out. Returning to our initial question, I don't think Thanos will break Marvel's villain curse, simply because it doesn't exist. The MCU had weak villains in the first batch of movies, but based on really a larger sample size, it appears it's largely due to the nature of origin stories. I don't think Marvel is really truly at fault for this, but I do think Marvel's at fault for how they've handled these villains such as killing them off with no consequence or explanation, but I don't think currently that's still an issue. And Thanos, if everything is executed well, won't be Marvel's first good villain. So let us know down below, do you like MCU's villains so far? Are there any villains you would like to see in the future? What's kind of your top three, bottom three picks? 
Comment below your guys' thoughts, and we'll see you on our next editorial. Thanks for checking out our content. Check out our Facebook and Twitter for our latest updates, and our website for the latest news articles and editorials. Also, feel free to donate to our Patreon if you'd like to see our current content get better. Thanks for watching, we hope you guys have a great day.